turn off on me? Happy Easter. Alleluia. Christ is risen. The Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Well, I never imagined getting up. Well, I would be up this early normally on Easter Sunday, but I never imagined getting up and coming on to our deck to bring everyone a Easter greeting um, and to and to celebrate Christ Easter with risen, all of you so far away but yet close thanks to modern technology well, it has been an unusual unusual so holy week and this is certainly a Sunday. glorious glorious Sunday morning and if you can see out here it is just a beautiful day and earlier this week they were projecting uh, rain so I have to tell you I am very happy that um, the weather provided for us. Uh, today is uh, is a more of a gathering, a gathering this morning to reflect and to give thanks to all that we have to celebrate that uh, Christ is risen. Um, and then I encourage all of us to attend 
either the Cathedral of the Incarnation, where Bishop Eloff will be preaching, and that is with all of the other uh, members of our diocese, or also the National Cathedral down in Washington. We are so fortunate to have many different options. And so I encourage you to do that at 11 and 11.15 respect, respectively. But now let us begin our service. And um, I begin with those favorite words that I cannot wait to shout every Easter morning, which is, Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord has risen indeed, Alleluia. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life, grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of the Lord's resurrection, <clears throat> may we be praised from the death of sin by your life-giving Spirit, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now let us say together, or read together, Psalm 118. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let Israel now proclaim, his mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song and he has become my salvation. There is a sound of exaltation and victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord has punished me sorely but he did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them. I will offer thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. He who is righteous may enter. I will give thanks to you for you answered me and have become my salvation. And the same stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. On this day, the Lord has acted. He will rejoice and be glad in it. And now a reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. On the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciples, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we do not know where they have laid them, him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went towards the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in and saw and believed. As yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary st stood weeping outside the tomb. And as she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been laying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, they have taken away my Lord and I do not know where they have laid him. 
And she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, sir, they have carried him away. Tell me where you have laid him and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. And she turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to the Father, but go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that she, what he had said these things to her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. This is a story that shows the loss of what was, yet points towards the future of what is to become. A story that begins in darkness, the darkness of death that still hung over their world. And it was in that darkness that Mary Magdalene returned to the tomb where Jesus laid. Maybe she wanted to be close to him one last time, to weep quietly without anyone around her, to feel his presence so maybe, just maybe, she could gain some strength to live another day. She would always carry the horror of his death, just as the others would carry their guilt of abandonment but she must have been clinging to some sense of belief that by sitting near his body, it allowed her to cling to the life they once had. But things aren't right when she comes to the tomb. His body is missing, presumed stolen, and she runs back to tell the others. They follow her back to find out what she had told them was true but they didn't stick around for long. Maybe the empty tomb was just too much for them. Another crushing blow after all they had experienced. But Mary doesn't leave. Mary remains and it is what happens next that things begin to shift. She encounters angels who see her weeping and ask why. She explains that his body is gone, and when she returns to the tomb, she turns from the tomb, she sees Jesus standing there. He too inquires about her grief. With tears in her eyes, she doesn't even recognize him. It was only after he said her name, Mary, Mary. Did the shroud of darkness lift, revealing Jesus standing before her? He kept his distance, explaining he hadn't ascended to the Father, but to go and tell the others. At that moment, at the moment she hears his voice, Mary's grief and despair gives way to the promise of hope and joy. This is when things began to make sense. What he had spoken about before his death was true. They weren't abandoned. He was still with them. Can you imagine how she, what she must have felt when he said her name, Mary? Love surely filled her broken heart as she heard Christ's deep love spoken in her name. The anguish and despair that had consumed her vanished from her body. Things suddenly changed and we witnessed not the end of a tragic story, but the beginning of a new dawn, a new day, the day of resurrection. 
This is the gift that has been given to us this Easter morning. The gift of a new day, a new beginning, a promise of hope and true and abiding love. Despite, despite what obstacles we may encounter. And I don't know about you, but that is the message that I need to hear right now. I need to hold on to the knowledge of Christ's everlasting presence within my heart, the hope of resurrection, of new beginnings, because of all that swirls around me, causing us great grief and fear and despair for everyone. None of us is Im immune. None of us is immune to what has unfolded over the last few weeks. We have and we will be continue to be impacted by this relentless virus that has invaded our lives. But we must hold on to the hope and the knowledge of the resurrection, the hope and the knowledge of a new dawn, so we won't be overcome. We will get through this together, just as Mary discovered in the dawn of her new day. She realized that things were different. Jesus wouldn't be with her in the flesh, but that he hadn't discarded her or any of them, even those who denied him. His grace-filled love permeated them in ways it never could have if he had lived. You see, my friends, because Mary Magdalene arrived at the tomb well before the sun crested over the horizon, unlike any of the other gospel readings, this gospel writer is telling us that Christ's life and death on earth is ending and is the ending of an old world. And our new world began the moment she recognized her name and recognized his voice when he called out Mary. That was when our new world began a world in which God reveals his deep and unending love for us through the resurrection of his son. It is a love that can be shared from one person to another, overcoming any rampant, deadly virus. She recognized that she had seen the glory of the Father's only son, full of grace and truth, as John declared at the beginning of his gospel. This is the message we need to hold on to, to share it through our actions and our words and in our hearts, to carry it forward in new and, in un and creative ways because of how we find ourselves today. I have no doubt we will be strengthened and we will rise resolute if we let our loving light break into the darkness that covers our world. That is the true promise of Easter morning. And it needs to be shared with great abandon because this world, this world thirsts for hope, this world thirsts for compassion, this world thirsts for the love that Jesus' resurrection brought into the world. And so my friends, shout as Mary did when she ran back to share the good news with the others. Alleluia, the Lord is risen. The Lord has risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. And now we will continue with the special Easter prayers of intercession. After each petition, please respond. Hear our prayer. For the human family, hear our prayer. For those in higher risk of infection, hear our prayer. For all who were ill and seek medical care, hear our prayer. For first responders and medical caregivers, hear our prayer. For those significantly impacted economically by the pandemic, hear our prayer. For those whom we love, and whose needs are known to us. Hear our prayer. For those isolated and lonely, hear our prayer. 
for those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries, especially Aileen Shepard and Dylan Strong and Ann Wismer. Hear our prayer. For leaders in government, hear our prayer. For the church to respond with compassion, hear our prayer. And now, as our Lord Jesus Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now the blessing of our Lord Jesus Christ. Bless you with the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. May he be upon you and remain with you always. And now let us go forth to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Hallelujah.